Hey there, it's and welcome really... back to Skies of Hagadia. And now we're actually in the first, well, main dungeon of the game. See, there's some water, Gareth. All right. We're in the water this temple. Is just... It is. <laughs> water temple. It's Lost Wolf from SA1. There's a snake thing. Look at it. It's a hack. It's a fucking ripoff. I did always used to call this area Lost World. <laughs> And yeah, th th this looks like early Dreamcast uh, Sonic Team Water. It just looks like gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this. You know what's this? Uh, so something. Oh. What's about after you? After you? Yeah. Uh, dude, that decision just there. I'm pretty certain that both answers uh, are technically incorrect. <laughs> Even though the one I said is actually what they end up doing. What? That's b fuck you, fuck Sonic device. Team. <laughs> Sonic Team. <laughs> Even though they didn't make it, fuck you, Sonic Team. It's fuck you, Sonic Team. They deserve a little more blame. <laughs> so you know, I, I was thinking, something I... Di didn't the developers of this make Sega Bass Fishing Two also? I, I don't know. <laughs> I... Go ahead, Gareth. I was gonna say, Carto, because um, how how well does does the game like con control? Like, you know, as you're running around, does it does it feel stiff? Like, is it how does it is it, uh, is it good to control? If it's it's pretty standard stuff. It's nothing too special. I mean, the only real trouble is um, really getting on ladders because a lot of the time the camera angle will just be set, so you don't really have much control over that. So you can't really tell where you are. Um, uh, next to the ladder. I will say, I, I like how in that room we were just in, uh, the, the map, it kind of, it, it lit up as you walked around, so you knew, so you know where you've been. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a, a nice little touch. Oh, come on, this is just, this is straight up the water temple for more of <laughs> time. Come on. <laughs> There's also, um, we were mentioning the little radar for the dungeon. The overworld map has a thing I like where it's pretty much just a blank slate, but as you explore around, like, it uncovers the, the map some. Mm. Probably not great if you have somewhere specific you don't know where to go, but otherwise it's a nice little piratey kind of thing. Yeah, now, so that, in, we, in, now that we've uh, thrown that little switch, all these little torches come on. So in, in context of of the story thus far, are we going to places our characters have never gone to before? Um, I I don't believe they they've really been to Shrine Island before. It's like they know of it, but I don't think they've ever had a reason to come to it. Okay. Uh oh. I, this is what a random battle does. And these the th this basically means that this battle. Even though it appears to be random, isn't. <laughs> it's just, this is a scripted battle. No matter what you do, you will always have this fight. I guess they were just too lazy to put a little icon in the overworld and have a little text saying, uh oh, we gotta fight this thing. <laughs> Carter, you're, I think you're also. Um, Showing off something in these battles where you can change the element of your attack with a button. Uh, yes, uh, this is this is how you really get uh, uh, how you learn new magic. Uh, the color of your weapon determines what elements of magic you'll learn. So currently it's purple, so I'd earn ice magic. Uh, after every after every battle, you'll gain experience. In that in that element, and once it levels up enough, you'll gain a new magic spell. Now, I like that. And there's also a thing where some enemies obviously are resistant or you know weaker to certain types of magic. So you do have kind of a little guessing game trying to figure out which enemies are weak and resistant to certain things. Yeah, keeps you on your toes. I like that you. I like that you're fighting grounder. Yeah. Oh, oh. God, Satan's circle. <laughs> fun. 
<laughs> we beat up a giant fish. Fuck yeah. <laughs> we stabbed it a few times and fucking incinerated it. <laughs> Gotta get there somehow. Yep, we got something to eat. <laughs> Which, actually, later on in the game, that is actually a mission. You have to actually go around an island, activating random battles, to fight certain <laughs> enemies to get food. <laughs> Apparently, I need to find my disc and beat this game already. <laughs> that sounds great. No, honestly, I mean, I, I mean, I wouldn't be against recording more of the game, but it was, it would have to be like in, in, in small chunks. In chunks, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, all this time I've just been holding out for a Steam port. Like that's the main reason I haven't gone back to beat this game. Yeah. Because I always think that once they do, it'll come out and it'll be the better way to play. Oh yeah. Even though, I was... even though I won't be able to run it because my computers hate uh, playing games. <laughs> I just imagine if he had been like like two seconds too slow getting out the way, that water would have just like, fucking pushed him off the island. <laughs> <laughs> so in in so Carter, in, in terms of, of combat, is this a thing where like you get you get you acquire new weapons and you can equip different ones or are you, are you kind of stuck with your basic ones like every character has like a set weapon throughout the game every, every character has a, has a set weapon like um uh, vice always has uh, twin swords uh, twin cutlass swords Ico always has a boomerang but you'll get more uh, like you'll get different boomerangs throughout the game so you always get a new newer version so it's it's kind of like the keyblades in Kingdom Hearts. You you always have a keyblade, but you can equip which which type you want. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. And there there are I think they were actually added in this version. Uh, you can actually get some comedic weapons, like <laughs> um, like Ika gets uh, the Swirlerang, which is actually just a giant lollipop. <laughs> uh, and great. Vice Vice gets the tuna cutlass, which is actually just a giant tuna. I was so hoping he'd get a fish. Yes. <laughs> oh, I will say, Vice's, Vice's animation, he opens a chest, turns around, and puts his fist in the air. It's not quite as uh, <laughs> as memorable as Link opening a chest <laughs> now, is it? <laughs> so, so, uh, so, again, so, so, you two, I, I played this, and uh, you obviously know more of this character. Where would you... In terms of, of video game characters, slash maybe just RPG characters, Carter, where would you rank then uh, Vice in terms of like like your favorite type of uh, RPG characters? In, in terms of RPG characters, um, I think I think he's third in my in my list. Okay, who who's one and two? Uh, number one would be Yuri Lowell from Tales of Vesperia, and second. It's kind of a cheat, but I'd I um, would be you Narakami from Persona Four. Okay. I have heard of these games. I have not played them, but I've heard of <laughs> them. <laughs> I have. I have any, I haven't even heard of them, Chris. What the fuck's this guy yeah. talking about? Goddamn weeaboo! <laughs> so yeah, so Chris, how about you? It's not so much on like specific characters that stand out to me. I mean, for one thing, I never beat the game, obviously, so I don't know how they develop. But for me, I just think of the game as a whole, like the tone of it and all these things. That's what I remember fondly about it. It just has a really nice tone, sense of adventure, a good spirit about it. But, you know, I only played like six to eight hours. So, you know, I don't feel comfortable ranking specific characters. I do like them, though. I so, so again, so Carter, so you said so roughly ninety minutes is about like a tenth of the game. So you're saying so at the, you could do the whole game in fifteen hours, maybe? Do you think? Uh, probably, probably longer. It's like I'm okay. try, trying to remember all the all the main stuff. Because it's, it's like trying to get as much done as I as I could. Because then I'd have to try and find all the discoveries and. Uh, upgrade a lot of stuff, so and I, I think if if I'm going full, if I'm uninterrupted, I'll probably be able to beat it in like probably two days, really. Okay. Mm. So in in terms of combat, is it a thing like say, 
uh, like a Final Fantasy or like a Kingdom Hearts, where you have like like melee attacks, but then you can do like magic as well. Uh, ba basically, yeah, it's like you just choose either just a regular attack, a special move, magic, guard, or focus stuff like that. You, you just select them there, then they go on. Yeah, and the special attacks tie into that huge gauge at the top that's always filling up every turn, and yeah. it uses from that. That's kind of like your magic bar for special moves, if you're wondering what that was, Gareth. Okay. So, so Kato, when, when you when you sent Grounder to the pits of hell, was that classed as a magic attack to focus? Like, what, what type of move was that? That was a fire-type magic move. Okay. So it's like, uh, but it's like every every element has two different types of magic. So there's offensive magic and buff magic. So f fire types would give you fire offensive magic, but also attack style buff magic. Buff varnish, buff wax varnish, buff buff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whoa. I guess you know what you know, like it, this 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 it's it's a very it's a very nitpicky thing and I know like a lot of people are gonna call me stupid in the comment section but I guess it just just in in terms of a, of a pure logical thing I I prefer I prefer something like Kingdom Hearts where like you're constantly running around I'm just like don't just stand there when he punches you you idiot do something yeah I mean like even as, even as, even as a kid like like for some reason the the only the only RPG way that doesn't bother me is Pokemon because it's 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 a like it's a kind of you're, you're fighting in a fighting tournament with Lee with like um, rules and, and like laws. Yeah. So it kind of makes sense, but like it's something like this where you're just being attacked by a giant robot. Part of me is just like, don't just stand there, you fucking well, mug! Like, do well, something. Well, something that I kind of like about this game is that um, after you select your moves, the characters then actually do. Like run up towards the enemy and do it, but also in the background you'll see the other characters just swinging at enemies. So it does. They do try to make it seem more active. <laughs> Fuck me! She just turned to the camera and smiled. I was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and Cardo, um, help me remember something. I think also the distance of how far you are from your enemy determines the type of attack, right? Like if Vice is farther away. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Advice is farther from a character. He does a different kind of physical, normal attack, right? Yeah, every, every character has, has a, a distance attack and a close range attack. So it's like Vice will mm. uh, have like a, a sword wave when he's too far away, but will just regularly swing if he's right in front of them. I got you. I remembered liking that, but I couldn't remember if it was only for Ika because she has the boomerang, which is ranged. Yeah, that's cool. It, it just kind of randomly happens because obviously once you're once you select the characters, they usually take it from there. Yeah, you can't really control their point, yeah. so it's, to speak. But it's usually the case of if the character, like, if Ica runs up to an enemy, it usually means you're getting a crit critical hit. Hmm. It's really neat. I, don't, I can't think of many RPGs that did anything like that specifically, where yeah. you don't control the character actively. Oh shit! Great lookout. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you have one guy on lookout, and he's facing the wrong way. <laughs> you had one fucking job, Ben. The lookout, you daft prick. <laughs> oh, MBM's pissed now. Well, they're fucked. And this was because it was like after we beat the Sentinel, I honestly thought that would be the end of the demo. Mm -hmm. So imagine it when I actually, going. yeah, well, imagine when I beat the beat the Sentinel, this comes up and I'm like, holy shit, this is starting to get good. <laughs> it's like it's I what, I never, good. yeah, I never actually expected something like this to happen this early in the game. It's like the, the enemy has found out where you live and they're coming to kill you, basically. Very shortly after the... Um, I, I forget, these guys are linked to that raid we did, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was very, very quick action. 
I'm also I'm also surprised that there's there's a bad language word in a Sega game. It's T-rated. That guy said, "Damn, this isn't Shadow the Hedgehog." I don't know if I like this. <laughs> well, Shadow looks nice at home with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> black, is this red, the bl edgy. <laughs> is, this, is this is, is this the black arms? Is that guy humanoid <laughs> Black Doom? Sure. You know, in all honesty, though, uh, Gaussian probably would be able to take uh, Black Doom without even getting undressed. <laughs> Ooh. I'm not even kidding. Gaussian does love to swing his cape around. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, right here, he's, Gaussian, he says, you know, burn the village and kill them all. It's like, What's he, Emperor Jesus. Palpatine? Play the entire the village out. from the attacks of a few. Kill the children. What do we do, sir? Just kill the children, then we'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> They're too cute. They must die. <laughs> e execute order 66. <laughs> sir, what about the dog? Kill. Bring it along. We oh, God, we, we can't kill the dog. Peter will have our heads. 